My name is Doug Parker, host of the Cruise Radio Podcast, and today we're going to take a tour of Carnival Legend. Before we get to this deck-by-deck walkthrough, if you'd like to see more ship tours, subscribe to the channel and give the video a thumbs up. So Carnival Legend is one of four Spirit Class ships. This vessel debuted in 2002. She is 88,500 gross registered tons, carries 2,124 guests, double occupancy, and is 963 feet long. Fun fact here, Costa Cruises also has two Spirit Class ships, the Costa Atlantica and Costa Mediterranea. As far as staterooms go, there are six balcony grand suites, 44 ocean view suites, 632 balcony cabins, 103 ocean view cabins, and 277 interior cabins. These Spirit Class ships are a unique build of vessel because of their promenade decks. They're a lot lower on this ship than any other ship, and they're two levels, which both adds more to the guest to space ratio and also a larger variety of venues. So we'll start this tour on deck one forward. This is where you'll find the Firebird Lounge. This is a multi-purpose room that is mostly used for the Punchline or Comedy Club during the evenings, as well as events like karaoke on the off nights. But other than staterooms, the only other public space you'll find on deck one is located on the aft or the back of the ship, and that's Medusa's Lair Dance Club. This is a nightclub that has two stories with a spiral staircase going from deck one up to deck two. Up to deck two aft is the main dining room. Carnival Legend, like other Spirit Class ships, only has one main two-deck dining room that is on the back of the ship. It spans both deck two and deck three. Something unique with this class of ship is that the galley is located on deck one, and there are two sets of escalators that go between the galley up to deck two and to deck three, which in turn gives more guest space. Walking out of Truffles Restaurant and making our way forward, we'll walk past four elevators and then the entrance to the nightclub will be on our left hand side. And then the Alchemy Bar pretty much takes up most of this part of the ship all the way from just outside of the main dining room until you get pretty much to the main atrium. The Legend Lobby, aka the main atrium, is also a little different on this ship because it's more mid to aft instead of the traditional atrium that is usually more forward. This adds to the unique design because if you look straight up, you'll notice you're right underneath the funnel of the cruise ship. The atrium, though, is your typical style atrium with a bar. You have three glass elevators and two staircases that lead down inside the atrium. This is where you'll also find the guest services and the shore excursion area. The glass elevators that are located in the atrium go from deck 1 all the way up to deck 10, which is where the steakhouse is located. Just forward of the atrium, you have Bonsai Sushi cut out there. And that's a little sit-down restaurant that serves sushi rolls, sashimi, skewered meats. Um, open for lunch some days, but dinner every night of the cruise. So it's all a la carte at the Bonsai Sushi restaurant. Really good sushi, too, by the way. The Club Merlin Casino is your typical casino you found on pretty much any cruise ship, but it can get pretty smoky on a sea day. If the casino was closed, the smell wasn't that bad, but when those neon lights are flashing, boy, that smoke is pouring out of there. The sports bar backs up to the casino. That is non-smoking. Of course, it does drift in there sometimes. That has a sports ticker in there with a bunch of TVs and a great place to go if you ever want to try to catch a game. If the game is on the Cruise Lines network that they subscribe to, they some mostly subscribe to like the NFL Network and the major ones, but the occasional off game will not be shown at sea. The Red Frog Pub is located just outside of the sports bar. This class of ship might have the second largest Red Frog Pub at sea. The first one is now Carnival Sunshine, or no, Carnival Sunrise. There's live music in here, a full service bar, just a good time to be had here in the Red Frog Pub. Now just outside of the pub, there's a staircase, and that staircase actually goes up to another promenade, but more on that in a moment, because in front of here is the trump card room, and then you have the main show theater, which is going to be three decks, deck two, three, and four, deck number two being the first deck. Also an interesting note is that there's a staircase in the main theater here that goes downstairs to the Firebird Lounge, so essentially you can bounce between the Punchline or Comedy Club and the playlist production shows without having to walk the entire length of the ship, because normally the playlist uh, club is in the back of the ship. This one, both of them are up front. I should also mention here that outside of the theater, there is a bank of elevators, four of them, that go from deck number one up to deck ten. There's a library and chapel just outside of the theater. The chapels are slowly going away on Carnival ships. Actually, in early 2019, they took the chapel that was on Carnival Pride and turned it into a craft room. I bet God really appreciated that. So Billy's Piano Bar is located just behind the chapel. And then outside of the piano bar, there's a staircase that takes you down to deck number two, which is where the Red Frog 
Frog Pub is, or you can take a stroll down Rodeo Drive that winds through all the fun shops, a lot of shopping on this ship, and the fun shops actually connect you, so that little passageway or Rodeo Drive connects you to the atrium of the ship, and that's where the photo gallery is located, both on the port and starboard side, so it kind of hugs the atrium on the second level. Also, the portrait studio is located in here as well. Continuing our walk to the back of the ship or after the ship, we'll head through the Odyssey Lounge, another great spot to grab a pre-dinner drink. And then you'll enter the second level of the main dining room, which is Truffles Restaurant. And as I mentioned earlier, there's only one main dining room on this ship, so it's two decks on the back here. Deck number four is mostly staterooms, with the exception of the front of the ship. It's there you'll find the video arcade, the Circle C Kids Club, and the third and final level of the main theater. Up to deck five forward is the Camp Ocean Kids program. That's at the very front of the ship as well, basically on top of the video arcade that's located on deck four. Deck number six, seven, and eight are all staterooms. Deck number nine is the Lido deck. We'll start in the very front of the Lido deck where you'll find the fitness center, a two-level fitness center here that actually has a spa, like a big whirlpool inside of the fitness center. Really cool, kind of between two levels. It's a two-deck gym here. You'll also find the locker rooms, both men and women, steam rooms and saunas in each one, so they're not co-ed. Different ones for the men, different ones for the women. And then there's the treatment rooms for spa services, such as acupuncture, treatment rooms for the massages, getting your hair done, pedicures, and and manicures. If you love pools on cruise ships, then you'll love pretty much any Spirit class ship because the main deck has three pools on it. There are two pools and two hot tubs located midship, and then dividing the two pools, you're going to have the Red Frog Rum Bar and the Blue Iguana Tequila Bar. Other side of that is the pools, then as you make your way back, you're going to come to Guy's Burger Joint, a little stage, and then the Blue Iguana Cantina, and then you walk into the buffet. And speaking of the buffet, the buffet area on Carnival Legend is very nice. It kind of mirrors each other in the front and in the back. So there's you know, plenty of seating in here. Your different food stations as well. You have your pizza, your Carnival Deli. And then making your way all the way back, you're going to have the Serenity area. So most Carnival ships have the Serenity up front except the Fantasy Class ship that's in the very back. So the Serenity area back here is where you'll find your third pool on Lido deck. This is the Serenity area, adults only, no kids allowed. Uh, back here, there's a Serenity bar. There's that pool, a hot tub, loungers, clamshells, day beds, also a shower back here, and plenty of shade too. So if you want to duck out of the sun, you don't have to scorch the whole time, which also makes it feel like it's a more open area compared to other, you know, Carnival Serenity decks. Now let's go up to deck number 10 forward, more of the fitness center up here in the studio. Um, Club 02 also located on deck number 10. Deck number 10 midship, though, is where the steakhouse is. Now something that makes the steakhouse in this class of ships really stand out is where the steakhouse is located. So it's located on deck 10 and 11 because it is the two-deck steakhouse but it's located directly underneath the funnel. So if you're standing in the main atrium and you're looking up, you're actually looking at the very, you know, the roof of the funnel, the steakhouse is right up there. If you're looking down from the steakhouse, you're looking down into the atrium, you can take the glass elevators up to the steakhouse as well. And it's just a really cool spot to grab a specialty dinner, especially when the sun is setting and you have that bright light coming into the red funnel there. Just a really cool experience. All right, we're getting towards the end here. Deck number 11 forward is the jogging track, the mini golf course, and the basketball court. This is also a great observation area up here if you're sailing away from port or if you're especially sailing in Alaska. Um, deck number 11 aft is the water park. So you have the kid slides, the yellow slide, and the green thunder. In 2014, this ship got the green thunder, which is a free fall water slide that basically sends you down a green tube when you aren't expecting it. The attendants are really good at distracting you, so you don't know when they're going to open that trap door and send you flying below. This is a really cool slide, and if you're into adventure and thrills, you'd really like this one. And the final deck is the Sky Deck, a great observation area just underneath the funnel. If you'd like to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the thumbs up button. I sure would appreciate it. You're the reason why I do make these videos. A couple of closing tips here for Carnival Legend. For one, we just talked about it, but try the Green Thunder water slide if you're into thrills. Eat at the steakhouse. It's really cool sitting underneath that funnel especially on deck number 11. It's the second tier of the steakhouse. And finally, check out the Enchanted Forest. That's the secret promenade that no one really ever knows about. Um, it's just to the port and starboard side on deck three of the theater. Some tables in there and a walkway. You can kind of find some quiet spots in there as well. Um, so that's probably my three tips for Carnival Legend. 
My name is Doug Parker. I'm the host of the Cruise Radio podcast and the daily Cruise Radio news briefs. You can hear both shows where you listen to your favorite podcast. Just search Cruise Radio or Cruise Radio News. Enjoy all the space you have on the ship. This class of ship has the highest passenger to space ratio in the fleet. Even the newer and bigger ships don't have as much passenger space as this one does. So what do you think about Carnival Legend? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.